Welcome to part 10, part 10 of Project 425, the Desmo Sedici restoration. How are you going, Dan, all right? Yeah, I'm good, mate, you? Yeah, I'm good. I can see bits of the bike here today that I haven't seen for a long time. They've been on the shelves, tucked away for a few months. Yep. And we should set the scene and let people know what we're about to do today. You said to me off camera that by the end of today, we're gonna have a rolling chassis. Yep. So that means with this bike, frame back on. Frame back on, forks in, wheels in. Swing it on back in. Yeah. Sounds like a lot of work. Nah, it'd be all right. Well, I know that in the time since we did that, the head rebuild last time, you've been incredibly busy and I've been away with the Bike World crew on yeah. a couple of press launches. Right, yeah. uh, so hopefully while people are listening to my man flu voice, they can see pretty pictures on the screen of Chris on a KTM Super Duke, me on various bikes in various places, Las Vegas, loads of cool stuff. But as we've always said with this workshop, it's a live workshop. You've got yeah. bills to pay and jobs to do. So there's a little bit of the build that people have missed, which you think is probably the most boring bit, which is just putting the thing back together. Cleaning and bolting auxiliary parts back on the engine. Yep. Not very exciting stuff. You've seen it all come apart anyway. Um, so if people yeah. do want to see the bike going back together, they should just watch an old episode of us taking it apart yeah. and play it in reverse. Exactly. And it'll be going back in. Yeah. So you've reassembled the motor. Yep. People have seen the heads going back together. That was a key part that we know people were keen to see the whole Desmodronic valve train system yeah, and how sure. that all works and all those expensive shims and overpriced gaskets, they're all back in. The motor is uh, oil tight. Good ready to go. To go. Yeah. Ready to go, ready to run. Okay, yeah, cool. All right, so we are going to start where? We are going to I'll tell you where I'm going to start. I am freezing, it's freezing in here. It's not. It's where are we going to start? I have got man flu, yeah. We're literally, we're going to put the chassis back on to the engine. Yep. And then slide the forks in it. Okay. All that kind of stuff, really. I mean, we've got loads of wiring to do and all that, but yeah. Let's just call it wiring and do that with yeah. our hands. Yeah. If the cameras weren't here and I and I wasn't here, in terms of timeline, how long would it take you to have this bike from where we're at right now to the stage where you could put a key in and start the thing up? Probably take a couple of days, realistically. Okay, so two days work without me getting in the way. Yeah. So probably six months work for the pair of us. Shall we start? Let's do it. I am them lined up. Okay. I've only that's just a couple of turns, right? Yeah, fine. A couple of turns again then. Yes, please mate. We are reassembling. We're reassembling. All I ask, if you're going to put it in, yep. tighten it up. Really don't want to put things in loose. Don't. Just tighten it up because you'll end up forgetting about it. Okay. I won't, but you will. Of course. And then uh, you know that it's nice and tight then. Now, obviously we've bolted the chassis on, we're just going to torque up all the uh, engine points, yep. frame, mounts. Yep. We said they've got to be at the right torque for flex and yep. all that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, we'll just do that now. Okay. And then really, that's the chassis on. Obviously we've got the swing arm and all that to assemble. I love how simple you're making it all look. Yeah, that's it, it's time, yeah, cool, it's the chassis on. What was the hardest bit inside the motor then? Definitely the valves. Yeah. They're a right pain. Um, it's just really time consuming. So many little fiddly bits. Yeah, and you had to loosely assemble and then disassemble. To make the adjustment. Yeah. But it's, it's all good, you know. Every, every day's a school day, so it's a learning curve. Oh, I really enjoy doing it. So. Yeah. yeah. It's good. That's handy. <laughs> <laughs> that just calm down, mate. It's Look fine. at it. We're all right. Now we're really doing is just wiring up the main harness to the engine. So we've got like crank sensors, coils. Pictures, I don't know if you can see them, that Dan took, it feels like a lifetime ago. Yeah, it does. And now suddenly relevant again because we can use them as our reference points. Yeah, it's definitely handy to be able to see where things were uh, March, so nearly a year ago, 
the danger is when you're on somebody else's phone you end up seeing pictures of theirs that you just wish you didn't find like these selfies that Dan's been taking I don't, Dan, I don't know what you're up to in this one what's going on there mate? sexy Deadpool I don't know if you can hear that in the background but the shutters on the workshop are rattling like crazy it's probably picking up on the mic it's the tail end of Storm Derek or whatever it's called Dennis I don't know, it's windy out there Obviously, being a V4, we've got four coils. Yep. And where we've taken the engine out, I marked all the wiring. Yep. Except for the coil plugs to the loom. Which are numbered anyway. Which are numbered off basically the chassis loom to the engine. Yep. Yeah. Because if you get them the wrong way around, the firing order is probably going to be all wrong. Yep. Um, so we've got them all written down on the loom, which is handy. So I'm literally tracing the wires from the coils down to the cylinder to the correct plug on the loom so not to the cylinder to the correct plug on the loom yeah so this one is number two which we've just plugged in just double check that yeah that's uh yeah we're 20x there. 020 yeah don't know if you can see that so this number three you might not be able to see it there but that's the number that we're looking at. An upside down number three, which is this one down out. That's where we can plug that one in. Alright, so it's all just a little bit fiddly. Do you want to put the fault in? Yeah. While I'm doing this? Yeah, I'm standing around doing not, not a great deal of anything. Crack on dude. So, I'll get on with this, try not to get in Dan's way. Now would be a good chance for me to remind everyone of our bromantic trip to the Nürburgring <laughs> to have these forks refreshed at the Olin's European R&D facility. That's a cool trip, wasn't it? It was a cool trip, yeah. Yeah, highlights would be laps of the Nürburgring, I guess. In a new golf, yeah. In a new golf cool. and also just seeing what goes on in that kind of workshop. You can see that episode of the project somewhere up here, thanks to the magic of YouTube. So, we've gone a little bit more. Keep going all the way. I'm just going to spin yeah, it around so that the Olin's badge is on the outside, is that right? Yeah. Look at that. Beautiful. Nice, Daniel. Right, it's coming up to flush now, keep going. About a half an inch. Tiny bit more. Uh, yeah, I'd say maybe a touch more on your, same as the other one. This feels like a grown up's job. A front end. Front end's all in. Well. So now we can just do the mud guard. And that's it. Front wheel win. Okay. We've got this big carbon shroud that has to go in as yep. well. Yeah. But we're going to do some cleaning up in yeah, there first. We'll, we'll do a bit. Of, yeah, a bit of polishing. All right. Cool, mate. What do you want me to do next now then? Put the mud guard on, dude. Right. So over the back. Yeah, mate. Happy with all that in there? It's all right, man. Yeah, <laughs> made it look easy. I made it look easy. <laughs> I struggled to lash the front mud guard in while you <laughs> rewired it in five minutes. Brilliant. Okay, airbox. So that hose is there. Oh, got to go through there with that one, surely. Lift on that. I've got the clip for that just on there. Should you make a joke about lubing stuff up then? Should never go and dry, mate.
Yeah. So we're going in. Yeah. Yep. You in? Yeah, I am. Uh, the front one's popped up. Yeah, so I've just got to be a bit careful because it's a carbon air box. Everything's carbon, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. It's... No, you're good. Not far off at all. There you go. Spin that yeah, on. Just spin that on a couple of threads. Yep. 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 We're in. Cool. Let's see. Well, that was take 58 on that. <laughs> you don't want to know the kind of swear words we've just heard coming out of Dan's mouth. I think I learned a couple of new ones. You got that, John? Yeah. Oh, I've got the swing on, mate, yeah. I've got this collar in my hand. Is that what you're looking for? Yeah. Spin it? Yeah, go on, spin it. Alright, cool. Magic. Hold right. on, Mike. So now we've got all the rear linkage and that all on. So we'll remove the paddock stand, or the other stand, should I say? That's it. That's all you, John. That can slide out of there, mate. Look at that. Fully self-supported. Desmond. Desmond. It's basically ready to ride out, isn't it? Just like that, Dan. <laughs> Pow. Pow. <laughs> Back to reality. That was. That was. Quite a strange day, wasn't it? It might not look like we've achieved much, but at the same time, a couple of hours ago, there was only an engine sat here. Yeah, it's made me sweat today, but taking apart a bike is relatively easy. Assembling everything <laughs> yeah. anyone is a pain can strip, in the ass. Anyone can strip anything down, can't they? But no, we've done well, mate, look. Yeah. It's a motorbike, pretty yep. much, so it's, um, it's been good. Yeah, I, I think I quite like the fact that you were Taking your phone out and having a look at some of the pictures yeah. that we took a year ago of parts as they were coming apart. Rooting out the cables and all that kind of stuff really. That's, yeah. That's the main thing but... I think if you remember to, to take pictures, you don't need to remember where the cables go and it's much no. easier to just do one than the other, isn't it? We've got a workshop manual but it's just easier to flip through your iPhone, isn't it? Yep. So. so what's next? Aside from the obvious, you know, we're looking at the fact that there's a rear wheel missing. There's some, there's yeah, we're going to put new chain sprockets on here and, yep. and just all them new tyres obviously. Yeah make sure we're going to strip the brakes yeah clean all the brakes up okay um, and then really bleed everything up do the cooling system job done mate far up yep it's quite a nice feeling isn't it knowing looking at the motor now 100 percent that everything in there is as it should be whereas when we first started putting tools on this we just didn't know and there was that question over yeah. you know it's only done a thousand miles but it's been sat for so long exactly, yeah. and now you can hand on heart say you know the motor's good and, yeah. and you know, new head gaskets, the heads have been skimmed, so yep. yeah, you know, shouldn't really no issues. Wood. We shouldn't have no problems. No mate. issues at all. Yeah, that's been a long day for me, quite quite a stressful one. I'm glad that we are not just over there, we're properly on the on the kind of homeward stretch here, aren't yeah, we? I'm excited now. One one more episode in the workshop. Yeah. And then hopefully the final episode it will be blue sky and we'll be outside and doing wheelies, yeah. Doing massive wheelers. <laughs> We've seen my new five blade review, yeah. <laughs>